This week, I published a list of the top five technologies you should learn to land a web developer job in 2024, and React was at the forefront. Learning a new technology and keeping pace with its evolution can be challenging. Concepts become outdated, and new libraries in the ecosystem often take over. In this video, I will guide you through the React learning path for 2024. While this is based on my personal experience, having created a React playlist with over 20 million views, I assure you, you're in capable hands. I've split the React learning path into three sections, starting with the fundamentals. Let's dive in and start building the foundation that will turn you into a React Pro. In 2024, we finally say goodbye to create React app, embracing Wheat as the new standard for creating React projects. Once your Wheat React app is set up, it's time to dive into the core technical concepts of React. React applications consist of reusable code known as components. You learn about function components known for their simplicity. The era of class components is completely fading, making function components the primary focus. When creating components, you might initially be puzzled by the concept of writing HTML-like code within JavaScript. That would be JSX, which is the heart of React's expressive capability. It is how you will write your UI, combining the best of JavaScript and HTML. When working with React, writing modular code is essential. You'll learn to import and export components, maintaining a clean and manageable code base. Next, explore React fragments for grouping JSX elements without adding extra DOM nodes. It is a subtle yet powerful feature for efficient rendering. After structuring your UI, explore styling the components. There are various modern approaches, but starting with inline styles is a good initial step. You will then encounter props, short for properties, a fundamental way to pass data between components. Mastering props is crucial for building dynamic applications. However, props are read-only. A component cannot modify its own props. This leads you to the concept of state. State allows React components to change their output over time, which in turn re-renders the UI. To alter state in function components, you'll use the use state hook. Hooks are essential for leveraging React features in your components, and useState is a prime example. With state, you can change component values and conditionally render the UI. Understanding the various methods for conditional rendering in JSX is your next step. You will also learn to render lists of items efficiently and bug-free using the key prop. We all know user interactions are vital. So you will learn the React way of handling events to make your applications responsive and interactive. Forms are everywhere and handling them rightly in React is crucial. Learn about controlled and uncontrolled components and how to collect and submit user input seamlessly. Then explore the concept of composition over inheritance in component design. This design pattern will shape how you create reusable and scalable components in React. Finally, a React component goes through various phases like mounting, updating, and unmounting. Understand these using the use effect hook, which is key to managing side effects in function components. By progressing through these topics, you will gain a solid understanding of React fundamentals. Moving on from the fundamentals, you're now ready to tackle the advanced topics in React. This is where you truly begin to refine your skills and dive into the more complex aspects that will set you apart as a React developer. Almost every modern web application needs to interact with APIs. So you will learn how to make HTTP requests such as get, post, put patch, or delete using React. Mastering these will allow you to handle data from any backend service. Next, you'll tackle React context to solve the problem of prop drilling. The Create Context API and Use Context Hook will help you manage state elegantly across your entire application. This is crucial for maintaining a clean data flow without any mess. You will then explore refs using the Use Ref Hook and the Forward Ref API, which will help you manipulate the DOM directly when necessary. Although React typically discourages direct DOM manipulation, Knowing when and how to use refs is essential for advanced scenarios. Diving deeper into hooks, you will expand your knowledge beyond use state and use effect. You will work with use reducer for complex state scenarios. 
the newly added use hook for reading values from resources like promises or context, and use optimistic for optimistic UI updates. You will also learn to create your own custom hooks. Once comfortable with these, you can explore additional optional hooks. Use debug value, use ID, use imperative handle, use insertion effect, use layout effect, and finally use sync external store. Error handling is next on your path. You will learn to use error boundaries to handle exceptions gracefully, preventing a single component error from crashing your entire application and ensuring a better user experience. With portals, you will render components in a DOM node that exists outside the DOM hierarchy of the parent component. This is especially useful for modals, tooltips, and other UI overlays. You will then dive into three built-in components that React provides. The profiler component assists in performance analysis, helping you make decisions to optimize your components. Strict mode acts as a spell checker, identifying potential problems in your code early on. And suspense helps with data fetching and code splitting, making your app interactions smoother and reducing load times. You will then explore performance optimization techniques. Hooks like use memo, use callback, use transition, and use deferred value help a lot in this regard. You will also learn about memoization with memo, lazy loading components with lazy, and managing transitions with start transition. Finally, you will embrace the new paradigm of React server components. With the newly introduced cache and two hooks, namely use form state and use form status, you will build server rendered components that can interact seamlessly with client side components, unlocking new capabilities and performance optimization. By mastering these advanced topics, you will be able to build sophisticated and efficient React applications. This knowledge is what will make you a highly sought after developer in the React ecosystem. Speaking of React ecosystem, let's take a look at other packages which play well with React and help you create awesome React app. Let's take a look at our third section. In the React ecosystem, state management is your first stop. Explore client state management with SUSTAN or Redux Toolkit. And for server state management, consider TanStack Query or Redux Toolkit Query. Next, you will navigate, no pun intended, the world of routing. Understand how to present different components as users visit different URLs. React Router has been the standard, but keep an eye on TanStack Router v1 released just last week as it appears to be very promising. Styling your React apps is next. You can get started with CSS and JS solutions like Style Components or Emotion, both of which are widely used, or you can choose Tailwind CSS, which has become popular for its utility-first approach. For a quick start, UI component libraries like Material UI, MindTime, or ShadCN UI offer pre-designed components that can accelerate your development. In React, handling complex forms is simpler with React Hook Form, but also look out for TanStack Form, which promises to be another strong contender after its v1 release. For testing, you will use vTest alongside React Testing Library. For unit tests, and for end to end testing, consider Playwright or Cypress. Next, let's go over a few miscellaneous topics you should consider learning. First is TypeScript. TypeScript not only reduces bugs by adding types to your React apps, but also enhances the developer experience with improved auto-completion. Another essential tool is Storybook, which helps with component documentation and testing. For internationalization, experiment with the React i18 Next package, which simplifies adding multiple languages to your application. When it comes to authentication, Firebase and Superbase are good choices, offering a comprehensive suite of tools for secure user management. Looking ahead, if your path remains web-focused, Next.js is the framework to specialize in. And if you're drawn to mobile development, React Native, particularly with Expo, offers a powerful platform to expand your skills. Let me know in the comment section what excites you about learning in 2024. So this is my React learning path for 2024. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and share this video with your friends and colleagues. I will see you in the next one.